Thank you and good afternoon. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam Sports Report, February 2nd, 2023, Friday. Friday today. There is no Super Bowl this weekend. We've discussed Royal Stadium and other stadiums. Now we've got to discuss the University of Kansas Stadium. The Kansas Jayhawks have a new stadium. That means for me, I am going to go to KU games maybe with a nice chair. I can sit my butt and I don't have to sit in bleacher pleats. That's not my cup of tea, bleacher seats. They can say it's the atmosphere for Kansas basketball or Kansas football. I don't really give a crap. Nope, sorry, I, don't, I like my butt to be comfortable. Now let's kick it off to Kevin Harlem to introduce the KU Stadium. From the very beginning, Kansans have been known as builders, pioneers, Jayhawkers. Piece by piece, rock by rock, our state and our flagship university were built upon the traits of our forefathers. Unyielding, bold, resilient, relentless in every pursuit. We are trailblazers with a transformative vision to chart a new course. With an eye for innovation, but with an appreciation for our heritage, we launch into a previously unattainable new chapter for the University of Kansas. We are Jayhawks. Now, 158 years after the university became glorious to view, the stars have aligned for a new vision, one that exhibits the highest commitment to excellence and an unbridled ambition to impact our athletics program, institution, community, and state at an even greater level. The Gateway District and the new David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium. The entry point to our beautiful campus. A place for rock chalk is more than our victory chant. It is a connection to the foundation upon which it was built. From the waving wheat fields across the state to the limestone embedded in our hills, this exceptional project will pay heed to our tradition and heritage while revealing a new KU. It is a transformational new home, fit for a football program that has gone through its own reconstruction. This is an audacious new era for the University of Kansas. Join us, ever onward, to the stars. What? The Jayhawks get to play it. Arrowhead? Why can't they play at some high school like Shawnee Mission East? That's actually in Kansas. The Kansas City Chiefs are not in Kansas. They're in Missouri. I just can't figure this out. They get 40,000 seats. Okay, we can probably find a study school that has 40,000 seats. But now they want to get to 70, 80 some, 77 some. I don't like it. I just don't like it. They can play at Children Mercy Park where they're playing other games there. They're playing two games there. They're playing four games at Arrowhead. The four games that will be at Arrowhead, unfortunately, September 28, 2024, Kansas will play TCU. October 19th, Houston, G-H-E-A, Field Arrowhead Stadium. Same thing with TCU. Colorado, November 23rd, 2024. November 9th at Arrowhead Stadium against Iowa State. That's the final game. We'll do college basketball first. In Lawrence, tomorrow, Kansas will play. Houston will probably come out with a short show for this. Kansas and Houston, Kevin McCuller, Jr., and Hunter Dickerson are players to watch out for for the Jayhawks. 
Well, LJ Quire is a player to watch out for for Houston. The Hawks look for better play from De- Dewan Harrison, who hasn't looked good for the last couple games. He looked a little better, but that was against lesser competition. Game from Allen Hill Fieldhouse is at 3 o'clock. Houston, number 4 versus number 8. After an 0-3 in their last three games, Kansas State may be in the tournament. I haven't really looked. So they're going to start to need someone to some games. Kansas State will. The first will start with Oklahoma State. Kansas State won this first matchup. Players to watch out for Cam Carter and Giovanni Smith. Game time is at 1. Big 12 ESPN+. Plus. We're not going to talk about Mizzou. They don't worth talking about. Number 12, Iowa State. Baylor. 18, number 12, Iowa State host Baylor. Players to watch out for Tim Lipsy, a player to watch out for Baylor. Coach Jacoby Walter, who averages 15 a game. Iowa State was off this week after beating Kansas last week. Tip is at 7 o'clock for the Iowa State game. In the SEC, it will be Kentucky, number 10, who lost earlier this week to Florida. Number five, Tennessee. And Kentucky are at 7.30. ESPN Plus. Players to watch out for. Dalton Kinnick averages 20.1 for Tennessee. And Kentucky, Antonio Reeves averages 19.5. Tip is at 7.30. What will be interesting to see for the KU and international games, what time are they? For the what will it be? Should be what time will the Chiefs put their games around the schedule? Assuming one is an international game, when do they put the games? Is it th- that week or is it next week when KU doesn't play? Secret for the Chiefs: They have off-season. Chris Jones is sitting there on the sidelines with a butt warmer. And too busy to play for his cash. He got all of his bonuses this year, and yet he wants to be on the sidelines. He'll earn $31 million somewhere else. Chris Jones improves the defense fine. But I'm not going to argue with you, but he's done nothing much in the playoff. Let's be honest. He's going to have to go in for a guy who tore his ACL, who has been better in the playoffs, Charles Ominihu. We'll talk more as the week goes on, let's finish with more on the Bears tomorrow and maybe more on Mike McDougal. Mike McDougal gets hired from the Ravens. We talked about that yesterday. Here's more on that. He was the defensive coordinator for the Ravens and now the Seahawks head coach. After tonight, um, that's a pretty good deal for the Commanders. A defensive guy who struggled in more, had a hard time with that on the playoff game. I would not have hired him. I would not hire most defensive coordinators. Only a few, maybe, Steve Spagnola. At least he deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame for assistant coaches, the best defensive coach ever to coach the Chiefs, and maybe the best defensive coach ever. Brian Johnson turned down the Seattle and Commanders job. We'll see who's next for the Commanders. That's Sam Vaughn Sports. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Here's more. Well, Jay, the Seattle Seahawks have gone from the oldest coach in the league in Pete Carroll to the now youngest head coach in the league and the former Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, who interviewed yesterday for the first time with the team. They flew him back to Seattle. That was a sign right there that they were ready to move on Mike McDonald, who was in play in Tennessee, who was in play in Carolina, who was highly thought of. And here's how badly the Seahawks wanted Mike McDonald. They were ready, if the Baltimore Ravens won this past weekend against the Chiefs, to hold off their search until after the Super Bowl so that they could get a chance to talk to and try to hire Mike McDonald as their head coach. He's 36 years old, and now he steps into a division where his main job will be to try to slow down the offensive attacks of Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers and Sean McVay of the Los Angeles Rams. But the Seahawks are changing the direction of their franchise. 
The youth movement is on, and they are having Mike McDonald lead that franchise into the future with a six-year contract.